Hey everyone, you're listening to Little Bit of Life Podcast with Little. This podcast is dedicated to having the real, raw, and the occasional ridiculous chats about everything that we seem to think but don't say. Very little is off limits. Sit back, enjoy, and let's get started. Today's episode is sponsored by Bella Sante Health, founded locally here in Tucson, Arizona in 2019 by a group of medical professionals and athletes. That's why they have a scientific approach to health and a commitment to excellence in everything that they do. They utilize 99.9% pure hemp isolate grown in Colorado. With less than 0.3% THC, their CBD products are legal in all 50 states for every need you could possibly have. Make sure to check them out in the bio for your free consultation. Hey guys, and welcome into another episode of Little Bit of Life Podcast with Little. I normally do my recordings in the morning or in the afternoons. I usually do them with a guest, and I usually have this amazing topic that's going to just blow your minds. And it right now, as I'm recording, it is about 9.35 p.m., um, and I just felt that this topic has kind of just been resonating with me all day. I woke up this morning, I had a conversation with a really good friend of mine for almost two hours, we kind of chit-chatted about this, Um, was on, you know, social media tonight, and this topic really resonated with me. So I wanted to get on here tonight and just kind of get this off of my chest for listeners. Maybe some of you are feeling the same way. Maybe some of you are in the situation that I'm going to be expressing and talking about. And I also wanted to do this recording because I am very excited because I do have season two that is coming out. With season two of the podcast, there's going to be some changes. And I know people don't do well with change, which is actually going to be discussed in this episode. Season two is going to be coming out and we're going to have just some new and upbeat and light and just change. And change is a good thing. I think when us as humans, we think of change, it's almost this panic of the unknown and we become comfortable. When I first started this podcast, I'll be honest, because I wrote it on the blog today on the website, I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea what a podcast entailed. I didn't know if anyone was even going to listen, who would listen, possibly who would judge me. And With that, it's become a learning process, but with learning comes growth. And this podcast, and I'm so grateful to everyone listening right now, has allowed me to grow as an individual. But with me growing as an individual, I felt that it's necessary that the podcast grows with me. And each topic we talk about, it's allowing you guys to grow as well. So I believe in growth and I believe in change and I believe that nothing can stay stagnant for long because if it gets stagnant, then where are we in our day-to-day life? If we know as soon as we click that play button, we know exactly how the intro music is going to come out. We know exactly what the sponsors are going to be. And I felt like it's time for a change. So I do have an episode that's dropping September 5th. Um, September is the National Recovery Month. It's also going to be dropping on Labor Day of all days. And I'm excited because the week of September 5th is the week of my birthday. And I'm ready for change. I'm ready for things to get a facelift. I'm ready for things to feel inspired again. And for us to actually be able to communicate and interact with each other on this podcast level of, hey, you know what? I'm really interested to see what's coming next. I'm interested to hear what's coming up next. So I'm doing this kind of synopsis and just kind of a little sneak peek of um, what this episode's going to be, but also about what season two is going to entail. I've sent the snippet out to a few people. I've got some 50-50 feedback. Let's be real. A lot of people really like the way the direction the podcast is going. They don't want it to change. And then there's people that are like, wow, this is like so different and it caught me and I'm really excited and this just feels like something fresh. And that's what I want to bring you guys. We're going with something fresh. We're going with a change. And today's episode, the topic that I'm going to talk about I should say tonight because I'm doing this podcast at night. Let's just be vulnerable and open and real and raw here. It's about change, but probably not how you think. So take a listen, have some downtime. If you're driving to work, 
really focus on this one and see, okay, is, is this kind of resonating with me? Is this affecting my life now? Has it affected my life in the past? Or maybe is it going to affect my life in the future if I don't? What's the word? Change. Take a listen, enjoy, and let me know your feedback on this one. I do have a website now. It's called podpage.com slash little bit of life. Go on there. Leave a voicemail. Yeah, you can leave a voicemail. Record what you think. Interact. Talk. Leave reviews. Leave comments. Express yourself. That's what the podcast community is all about. Take a listen. Hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. And guess what? Change it's okay. Practical nuke incoming! I want the flowers just because. I want million words good and safe. Oh, you noticed the attitude. Hi there. We are making another crock pot meal. <laughs> Four reasons why you'd hate that. Hey, I need some help. Okay, here's the big winning question for this episode of Little Bit of Life podcast. Did any of you listeners hear that little audio clip intro, did you recognize possibly where that's from? If you guessed social media, you win the prize. But if you really truly guessed TikTok, you are the ultimate winner of the night. That's what I'm talking about tonight. That is the topic that has been resonating in my day today that I just can't seem to let go of. So, We know that TikTok came on the scene pretty quick when we were all in COVID and no one could get out of their house. We could not socialize with other people. We had no human interaction. But now look at where we are. It's been about a year and a half for some, two years for most, three years maximum. And when I sit and really reflect and look back, not only, like I said, of just my experience with this social media application on its own, it's a platform, but speaking to friends, just got this topic burning in my mind today. And it's been there all day. We're addicted to social media, okay? Let's just be real. We are addicted. Is TikTok really an app or is it legitimately a technology takeover? And don't get me wrong, there's been trends. I mean, look at, and I'm going to age myself, but when MySpace came out, everybody had to have it. We were on it for hours and it was who was in our top eight and what our profile song was and how many friends we had and what the design looked like on our background and the text and the font and the picture. And we became obsessed. What happened when MySpace kind of depleted itself and disappeared? Facebook came and that was just the best of the best, which was really, honestly, if you saw the social network movie, was supposed to be for those who had a college EDU email. I remember that pretty much around the time I was in college, Facebook initially came out. And I remember I was so bummed because I'm like, I don't have an EDU email or I probably just couldn't remember the password because story of my life. And I remember it being such this huge, like pristine thing that in order to be on there, you had to have an EDU, you had to be going to college and it was just this elite platform. And now there's billions of people on Facebook. But Facebook kind of, uh, you know, some people love it. Some people hate it. It's a love-hate relationship. Then came Instagram and it was Oh, faster social media right at your fingertips. You can swipe. You don't have to read paragraphs and sentences. And you can just get on there and see what you want to see and then just feel better. And then Instagram was just okay, but we want more. We want more. And as society, we always want more. And then COVID happened. And then came TikTok. I was talking to a friend of mine today, and it's just amazing to me how I sit there and I wonder how many lives 
has TikTok ruined? And don't get me wrong. I have TikTok. I have a really good following on there, and I now use it to find the most amazing guests and content for this podcast, and I'm so grateful for that. And yes, TikTok has changed lives for the better. There have been numerous, and I mean numerous, fundraisers that are legit that I was a part of. And then there's also fundraisers on there that are still happening that are not legit. There's creators on there that are not humble. There are people on there that, let's just let's just call, call it what it is, they're sneaky, they're fake. And they're looking for the likes and they're looking for the numbers and the followers and the views and the shares. But at the end of the day and at the end of our lives, I kept thinking about this today. Is it really going to matter? Are those likes going to matter? Are those so-called friends? Because let's be real, it's a number. It is a number. Is it really going to matter? And when we're looking at social media and TikTok in general, because now for those that have it, and I'm sure it's probably 90, maybe 95% of my listeners on here, you can buy gifts. That's been around for quite a while. You buy gifts for strangers. Listen to that again. You buy gifts for strangers. Ask yourself, when was the last time that you went into a store, you spent $20 because that's, you know, one of the lowest coin sets you can buy. You went and spent $20 out of your bank account, purchased something for $20, drove out of the parking lot, drove down the road, rolled your window down and said, hey, I've never met you before. My name is so-and-so and I got you a gift. Have you ever done that? Have you ever done that in your life? I don't think so. And buying food for homeless people does not count, so don't even go there. Then let's talk about these individuals that are, you know, big creators. I don't even like that word. What are you creating? What, it, what are you doing? What are you creating? Did you create a cell phone? Are you the next Steve Jobs? Like, what is it that you're creating? Because at the end of the day, we all copy each other's stuff. We're not that smart. We're not creating stuff like on our own. Everybody is learning from everybody. It's a puppet show. It's, oh, I saw this, so now I'm going to do it, but put my spin on it. Well, at the end of the day, it's all the same. We're all doing the same stuff. I'm doing a podcast, and I'm doing the same stuff as billions and billions of people out there that are listening, and they're creating podcasts. We learn from each other. But buying gifts on this platform buys you friends. Mind blown. <laughs> We're buying friends. We're buying attention. We're buying likes. But you know what those gifts and the coins and the race cars and the galaxies and all this stuff, do you know what, what it cannot buy you? It cannot buy you back more time. If you were to go on your phone and you were to go in your settings and you were to see the screen time that you spend on TikTok, or maybe TikTok's not even your app of choice of the addiction process here. Maybe it's Instagram, maybe it's Facebook, maybe it's Twitter, maybe it's another platform. Right now, in this moment, because I'm going to give you a second here, whether you have an iPhone or an Android, go to your settings, go to your screen time, and go to the number one app that you check as soon as your eyes open and as soon as you roll out of bed, okay? I'm looking at my timer right now as I'm doing this podcast. I'm going to give you guys a second and we're going to see what your answer is. Did you do it? Did you do it with me? Because I have the iPhone and I just looked at it and my daily average 
daily average of my screen time on my iPhone. And this isn't just one app. This is all over. So it's checking emails and, you know, replying back to text messages and apps and videos and everything. 10 hours and 56 minutes. And it's up 54% from last week. 10 hours and 56 minutes. I don't even get to sleep for 10 hours and 56 minutes. And if you guys have the iPhone, because um, <clears throat> I am an Apple advocate, mm -hmm. if you go under your screen time, there is something on there that shows app limits. You can set a time limit for your apps. Do this, please. Just do it. Do it for one day. Do it for a week. If you're just feeling amazing, do it for a week and see what this brings back into your life. The reason I'm doing this episode is because I had, like I said, I had that phone conversation with my friend this morning. This person was married and it's a good friend of mine. And this individual knows and admitted to me today that their marriage failed and they were divorced due partially or mostly to TikTok. Was it messaging other people? No. Which I'm sure that that has probably interfered with so many relationships and destroyed so many relationships because of that. Was it commenting or flirting on other people's, on other people's posts or content? No. It was gifts. It was this person being so nice and so genuine and so amazing on this platform of going into people's lives and just spending and spending and spending to show appreciation, to show gratitude, and to show support because that's what the app was for, right? It ended a marriage. It was destructive. And ultimately, they said it took time away from my family. It took time away from my children. So think about that. We as human beings with social media being so easily accessible on a phone or a tablet or a laptop, we could be sitting at work. And I know a lot of people in the work community, they will sit there and be like, oh, I haven't checked my Facebook in a while. But if I check my phone, my boss is going to, you know, I'm going to get in trouble. So I'm going to check in on my desktop really quickly in this little hidden window on my screen. And then we'll just we'll just click out and put it away. But I have to see it. I have to check it. We care more about strangers through a screen than we do real life interactions with those that are around us. I am completely guilty of this. When I sat today after the phone call and I just sat in my thoughts for a minute because this is just how my brain works, I questioned how much of my energy have I given to complete strangers and instead of not only giving that attention to people in real life that surround me, like my family and my friends that have been there through a lot of stuff with me in person, but how much of that time am I taking from myself? I always say you cannot help other people. You cannot pour into others' buckets if the bucket that you're carrying is empty or it is only half full or it has a hole in it. So out of all of this time of the 10 hours and 56 minutes that I'm spending on my phone and social media and being invited into this live and going into this video that was shared to me and commenting back, how much of this time am I not replenishing to give back to myself? How much time am I giving away versus giving into those that are around me? Ask yourself that. I really wonder. And that kind of then brought on this idea of why I'm coming on here is, do you control the app through your fingertips and your mental choices of when you sign on? Or has it now become where the app controls you? That was huge for me. I used to go live 
one or two times a day at minimum. And that was minimum. I would go on in the mornings and I would talk about mental health awareness and taking care of yourself and be positive and make today count. And then I just stopped doing it because I'm like, I feel like a fake because I'm living my life through everybody else's content. I'm comparing myself to everybody else's content. Oh, well, this person must be making a lot of money because they're traveling all the time. Well, maybe that person is escaping from their life or they have credit card debt all the way up to their eyeballs and they can't afford it. I would see couples and be like, oh, that's amazing. This person is in this amazing long distance relationship and they're flying and they're driving and they're so in love. But a year and a half down the road, you hear, yeah, well, it was all fake. This person just met me and, and it just, it never worked out, you know, and you hear all of these scenarios happening to where social media and the person behind the content allows you to see their life for how they want you to see it. They choose what you allow to see and they choose how you perceive it. And tonight, I wasn't even going to do this episode, but like I said, it's late. I've had a headache all day. I've had a migraine all day. It's just been one of those days. Thank you, Arizona weather, who can't really decide if you want to stay hot or have a monsoon or rain for 20 minutes. Just part of the process here. But I had some downtime. I was watching this documentary on Netflix and it, you know, I was like, eh, my brain, I just don't want my brain to work right now. So what did I do? I hit TikTok. I do this all the time. And I'm sitting here laughing at myself because I do this all the time. And this topic that I'm talking about is me telling you guys and being upfront and honest. I'm doing this. How do I stop? And I click the button on the app because, of course, it's on my home page, like right next to everything else. And if I'm going to go, like, I'm, I'm going to hit this button right now. Let's go take a look. What do I have on my home screen? I have Facebook, number one, Instagram, number two, TikTok, number three, Snapchat, number four. That's my top row. What is it? All social media. Go again to your home screen right now. What is on your home screen? What's in that first line of apps? My second line, Spotify, Pandora, my bank, and the calendar. Do I click those things usually first in the second row or the first row? Duh, the first row. But I clicked the TikTok icon on my home screen tonight. And I'm going through my For You page and videos are popping up. And I'm like, yep, seen that one. Oh, yeah, it's a dancing trend. Oh, yep, well, this is a sad story. Oh, this is an animal one running to you from heaven. I cannot watch those. I can't. I can watch true crime shows on the daily I still cannot watch one of those videos with the sad song and it says, oh, when there's someone waiting for you in heaven and it's the dang dog that's always running across the pasture. I I cry every time. I know it's coming and I cry every single time. I'm like, you know, can this just like not be in my algorithm? And I'm scrolling and on my For You page is a friend of mine who I've never met them. But we've known each other on the app for, I don't know, a solid year and a half, two years almost. I really look up to this person. This person has helped me through a lot of different community events, um, has been a huge supporter, and we've just kind of gone through a lot of stuff, like a lot of life changes and shifts, and I call them life cycles because we're always going through some form of a cycle. And normally, no offense if he's listening, but he knows there's there's no there's no hard feelings. Usually when I see him on, I'm like, yep, I know exactly what you're talking about. You're laughing, you're joking, you're enjoying a cocktail, and you're talking about battles, or you're talking about how some of these creators are just crappy people. But I stopped tonight because there was just a look. There was just a look on this person's face, and I'm like, something's not right. And my intuition kicked in, call it female intuition, I don't know. And I sat there and clicked in, because let's be real, don't be a creeper and watch from the outside. Um, you guys know who you are. 
I used to do that. Don't do it anymore. <laughs> and I got in to the live and he was distraught. He was upset and he was discussing how the app wasn't what it used to be. And he was just filled with like raw emotion. And he was like this earlier in the day. And I think that's kind of what sparked this idea of TikTok. Is it really just an app or is it technology takeover? And it broke my heart. And I'm trying not to cry when I say this because I have seen this person go through a lot on this app. Some stuff, yeah, did I support? Absolutely. And then some stuff, let's be real, no, I didn't support. Anyone who knows me on the app, I don't support battles. I just don't. TikTok takes a huge percentage portion of the gifts and the money you give anyway. And I just think we're in a time right now with the economy and with everything. My support of being there should be enough. My support of calling you on the phone and having a conversation if you're having a bad day or texting you and being like, hey, I'm proud of you. I believe in you. That in a instinctual human nature deep down with me resonates more than sitting with hundreds of people tapping a screen so my name pops up at the top or throwing you money that basically is just going to go to TikTok. I've never understood that. Does it pay people's bills? Yes. All the power to you. You do you but let me do me. But sitting in that live tonight and watching and listening and hearing him just upset and stating like, you know, my emotions got the best of me and I'm really upset that this situation happened and, and I'm so sorry. We are in this generation of quick everything. Everything is quick at our fingertips. But that also brings emotion and things on social media affect people differently and it hurts people differently. But at the end of the day, we're all human and we all have feelings. And I heard him say that, you know, he wasn't going to be on the app anymore and he needed to take a break. The flood of people, don't leave, you're amazing, I need you, my life isn't the same without you. It's okay to take a break. It's okay to mentally step out of the normal day-to-day -day box you're in and really look at what you're putting your energy and your focus and your time and your passion into. Because like I said in the beginning, you can buy friends. It's just a number. You can buy likes. It's just a number. But at the end of the day, you can't buy your time back. It doesn't come back. So while you're sitting with your face in a screen, and I'm, I'm learning this the hard way, trust me, because I am probably one of the worst people, and you can ask my family, every time you come to my house, I'm on the phone. I'm checking something. I'm responding to something. I'm clicking something. I'm sharing something. And I can't even tell you how many times I have missed out on what is right in front of me. If something, heaven forbid, were to ever happen to anyone in my family or my friends, am I going to sit there and think about, oh man, well that video in that one moment, I had like an extreme viral explosion and it took off and this was crazy and I had all these followers. No. I'm not going to sit there and think about that in that moment. I'm going to sit there and say, man, I would give anything to have one more moment, one more minute, one more adventure, one more touch, one more hug, one more, one more. So I ask you guys to really sit and think. How many hours a day, a week, a month are you wasting on social media. And if you're using this for business, more power to you. I'm using it right now. I'm using TikTok to find these, these amazing people that come on and want to share their story with the listeners, with you guys. I'm learning from people. Am I interacting as much on that app as I used to? Mm, no. Do I go live and sit there and and read people's comments and tell them what an amazing person they are and they have this great life and go out there and live it. No. Why? Because I'm doing it for myself. 
I'm looking in the mirror every day that I wake up and saying, you know what? You are awesome. You are amazing. And guys, I'm going to be real here. I don't wake up in the morning and think that I crap unicorns and rainbows. And that's just not the way the world works. I deal with what a lot of you guys deal with or everybody. I don't know. I deal with anxiety. I haven't been able to sleep lately at night. I wake up at 2 a.m. and 4 o'clock to 4.30 a.m. I don't know why. I have these feelings of I'm running out of money or I'm not okay or someone that I'm close with is hurting. Like, I'm just like spazzing out. And I deal with depression. I'm sure you guys can hear my Frenchie. He deals with depression too as he sits here and listens to me podcast at 10 o'clock at night. But I deal with stuff and I started to pull back and see what am I investing my time in? Is it me? Is it something that's going to put me forward? Is it something that I'm passionate about? Am I spending the moments that my eyes open to the moments that my eyes close at nighttime? Am I making the best of my time? I used to be a moderator for a really well-known person on TikTok, quite a few of them actually. And it was every night, two, three, four hours, and this expectation of you need to come in here and you need to moderate and you need to type this and you need to do this. And I sat there today when we were on the phone talking and I'm like, if I did three hours, okay, and we used to do this every single day. So if I did, mm, yeah, let's just say it was three hours and that's like, that's minimum. So three hours a day times seven for a whole week. It's 21 hours a week times four is 84 hours in the month. Okay. I did that for two years. That equals 2,016 hours. 2,016 hours sitting on someone's TikTok live and moderating who comes in and making sure that no one says anything rude and making sure that I'm really just promoting this creator and his content and everything he stands for. That was just a life. That was not private WhatsApp groups and stuff like that that was really trying to talk about the rules and the regulations and who can come in and maybe who else can help us out. But at the time, it, it meant the world to me. Because I was like, wow, I'm doing something different and I'm changing. And now I look back and I'm like, what was I doing? What was I thinking? You have one life to live. No one's going to live it for you. No one's going to choose the paths that you take. But I think that a lot of our problems with depression, with anxiety, with relationship failures, with parenting, with everything that we have on our shoulders and that we're dealing with. I honestly think it has to do with social media. I really do. My parents did not deal with this type of stress. Yeah, they had stress, of course, but they didn't deal with this kind of pressure and outside judgment and negativity and comparisons between your life and someone else's or your body and someone else's or someone else's children versus your children and how successful you are. They didn't deal with this kind of stuff. They saw it in person. And my grandparents, they sure as heck did not deal with this. It was wake up, go to work, be a good person, do a good job, fulfill your duties and your responsibilities, and then come home. And then you have your wife, your children, your home, and your structure. And that's what you worry about. And I think that we need to get back there where we're worrying about our structure. We're worrying about what is going on within the four walls of our home. And I think we need to worry about what's happening with the structure of ourselves. So I came on tonight to talk about this because I want to get this question out there. And like I said, go to the website, interact with the podcast. You can leave a voicemail on there. You can leave comments. I'm also on Facebook, Little Bit of Life Podcast. I am so interested to hear your feedback. How many hours are you wasting, wasting on social media that you could be putting back not only into 
your family, your children, your friends, but into yourself. How much better would your lives be if you were able to give back to yourself first? And like I said, I'm learning this. I'm learning to turn my phone on a sleep mode and have me time at night. And I'm sure for some of you, you're like, well, that's easy because you're not married and you don't have kids. Lock yourself in the bathroom for five minutes and just remember to take, a, to take just a nice deep breath. Or at night, set a timer, read a book, or listen to maybe a motivational podcast or something that's going to push you to be a better person. Or sit and spend time with your partner. Take a couple minutes to say, hey, every night we're going to do this together. We're going to sit together and say, hey, what was the high point of your day? What was the low point of your day? And talk. Like, does anyone know what that word means anymore? To talk? To talk to each other? If you're a parent, talk to your kids. Get back to put your tablet down. Put your phone away. Put the screen away. Sit with me. Talk to me. What was the high point of your day? What was the low point of your day? What do you want to be when you grow up? Where do you want to live when you're an adult? What do you want out of your life? And this goes for children. It goes for relationships. It goes for friendships. Talk to each other. Because when you talk to each other, your inner self is going to talk to yourself. And you're going to learn so much about, hey, you know what? This part of me has been really distant for a while. This part of me has been very dormant. Or you know what? This is a new side of me. And I learned this, I would say, probably in the last two months because I was always reading an article or on TikTok or falling asleep. I mean, I used to do this all the time. I used to fall asleep to people's lives because I just could not keep my eyes open. But I was just so bored and just like in a funk of my life. And I highly suggest just try to find new routines. Get out of the technology takeover. Read a book. Get your mind going. Talk to your partners. Journal. Meditate. Learn a new hobby. Learn a language. I mean, heck, I will admit, and you guys can look it up. It's probably weird, but you know what? It totally works. I am really big into ASMR. I fall asleep to ASMR. I, I do. I fall asleep to it sometimes. Because ASMR is a part of the brain that has to do with all these connections and it's a relaxation and because for me I can't meditate I just can't shut my brain off try a new routine try something and I highly suggest check your screen time and cut it down set a timer set a limit and see how this affects your day-to-day -day life even try it for a day and see how you feel tomorrow or maybe try it for a week and do it in your household make it a challenge if you have kids, make it a challenge. See who has the lowest screen time. Make it fun. Get back to being a family. Get back to being yourself. And get back to life. Because it kind of misses you right now. Thank you so much for tuning in with me and spending your time hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed today's podcast. And a special thank you to all our sponsors. Make sure to check them out. If you have any tips or topics, feel free to email me at littlebitoflifecast at gmail.com or you can also reach out to me on Instagram at littlecute1az. You never know if your topic will be next. Be sure to join me again for another episode of Little Bit of Life. Until next time, stay positive, stay blessed.